Zelensky says Severodonetsk largely destroyed, EU fails again to agree on Russian oil ban. Russian troops have destroyed all of the critical infrastructure in the key battleground city of Severodonetsk, and a large majority of buildings have been damaged. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Sunday As the three-month conflict drags on, Zelensky has said his forces are experiencing an indescribably difficult situation as Russian troops are storming the city, one of the last major municipalities still under Ukrainian control in Luhansk. The Ukrainian president met with troops Sunday on the front lines in the Kharkiv region touring damaged buildings in a bulletproof vest during a rare trip beyond Ukraine has repelled Russian troops from Kharkiv's capital, and life in the bummed-out city is gradually returning to normal. But there are still signs of a continued threat, Ukrainian state broadcaster Suspilm said witnesses reported shelling in northern parts of the city Sunday. Meanwhile, EU countries again fail to strike a deal on a plan to phase out Russian oil ahead of a special European Council summit in Brussels on Monday night. EU ambassadors will attempt again to discuss the issue Monday morning, an ongoing pitch to cut a key source of funding for Russia and penalize the nation for its invasion of Ukraine. Here's what else to know. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has agreed to a new three year contract with Russia's Gazprom to supply natural gas after a phone call with President Vladimir P. Serbia, a traditional ally of Russia, remains entirely dependent on Russia for gas supplies and has not joined Western sanctions against Moscow. Professionalism in the Russian army is eroding, which may be detrimental to Putin's chances of winning the war. The Institute for the Study of War said in an assessment. Russia has claimed its forces control the key transport hub of Lyman, which Western officials have said would give Russia an advantage in the potential next phase of the Donbas offensive. Britain's defense ministry said Russian forces have probably captured most of the city, but Ukraine has yet to confirm Russian control. Hundreds march in Warsaw to show support for Ukraine. Marchers carrying Ukrainian flags and a banner that said they are us packed Warsaw's Castle Square on Sunday to show support for Ukrainians, millions of whom Poland has housed during Russia's months. Videos on social media showed hundreds of people outside the Polish capital's royal castle on Sunday, chanting and waving Ukraine's blue and yellow flag. A concert followed the rally said Andrzej Dyszczycia, the Ukrainian ambassador to Poland, who tweeted his appreciation for the support. The demonstrators marched from Poland's same parliamentary building to Castle Square, Radio Poland reported Sunday. More than 3.5 million refugees have entered Poland since the Kremlin's invasion began February 24, the United Nations Refugee Agency said Friday. The Polish government has given Ukrainian refugees rights that are akin to citizenship, but Warsaw Mayor Rafał Truskowski warned in March that his city could be overburdened by the influx. In an April interview with Washington Post columnist David Ignatius, U.S. Ambassador to Poland Mark Brzezinski called on Western nations to give money to Polish aid groups because most of the refugees intend to stop. EU countries again failed to clinch deal on Russian oil ban. The EU has again failed to reach an agreement on a plan to phase out Russian oil, leaving a narrow window to strike a deal ahead of a special European Council summit in Brussels on Monday night and underscoring the challenge of building consensus when it comes to energy. A European Commission plan to wean off Russian oil has been held up for about a month, primarily over objections from Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban, who has insisted on more time and money to upgrade his landlocked country's oil and because there is sympathy for Hungary and other countries that remain reliant on imports from Russia, the holdouts have been offered extensions and exemptions, all to no avail. The latest proposal, for instance, would ban seaborne deliveries within months, but exempt pipeline deliveries for now, keeping oil flowing from Russia to several EU countries, including Hungary. But that was not enough to get Orban on board, according to EU officials and diplomats. Some EU diplomats say Orban's opposition goes beyond the oil issue, suggesting the Hungarian leader, who is a regular E.
you spoiler, is using the situation to punish officials for withholding economic recovery money over rule of law violations. EU ambassadors will discuss the issue Monday morning. If they fail to reach a consensus, e. EU leaders will pick up the conversation at the summit dinner Monday night. All critical infrastructure in Severodonetsk destroyed, Zelensky says. All of the critical infrastructure in Severodonetsk has been destroyed, Zelensky said in video posted on Telegram on Sunday, adding that about 90% of buildings have been damaged. While Ukrainian officials have insisted in recent days that Russia has not succeeded in capturing all of Severodonetsk. Zelensky described it as the principal task of the occupying they don't care how many lives it will take to try to raise their flag, he said. The eastern city is one of the last big cities under Ukrainian control in the Luhansk region, and its capture would be a marked symbolic victory for Russian forces. Duration of war partly depends on support from West. Zelensky says. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says he believes that the duration of Russia's invasion will depend on numerous factors, including ongoing support for Ukraine from the weather conditions, he said in an interview with CNN's Farid Zakaria that aired Sunday, include the desire of the United West to stay united in supporting Ukraine with weapons, with finance, to boost our reserves. Another factor is political will not to be afraid but to fight against Russia, he said. It also hinges on the desire of the Russian Federation, Zelensky said. The Ukrainian president conceded that Russia is prevailing in terms of weaponry. They outnumber us. They outgun us, he said. And what we need is weapons, of course. We need to be much more powerful. We should have much greater firepower than the Russians. Ukraine's advantage over Russian forces, he said, would be when we are truly united, when every country is dead sure what side it is on. 0.115 miners stuck underground in hard hit Donetsk region, officials says. In the hard hit Donetsk region, 115 miners are stuck underground because of power outages, a provincial leader said. Son Pavlo Karolinko, the governor of the region, wrote on Telegram that two districts, Bukmut and Kramatorsk, are without electricity as a result of hostilities. Dot authorities were working to help miners at two sites in Turetsk, a city slightly south of those districts, 112 at the Central Nile Mine and three at a nearby facility. The governor said authorities were taking the necessary steps to bring the miners to the surface. The BBC reported recently that only two mines are still working in Turetsk and that workers expressed concern about operating without proper safety measures. Even before the war, many of the region's once prolific coal mines had been abandoned or were in poor condition because of neglect and conflict with pro Russian militia. People go down the mine knowing they may not come back up. Anatoly Shalith, 69, deputy head of Turetsk's Mining Association, told the BBC. And when you do come back up, anything can happen, the town is constantly being bombed. Turkish president remains skeptical on Nordic countries NATO bid. Turkey remains to be persuaded that it should back NATO membership bids from Sweden and Finland, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan said. Talks with the two countries last week in Ankara were not at the desired level, he told reporters. It is unclear when further meetings might take place. NATO will hold a summit in Madrid at the end of June, and Turkey has said there is no time pressure to include NATO's Secretary General in discussions of the issue ahead of that. Finland and Sweden abandoned decades long military neutrality and applied to join NATO earlier this month, citing security concerns as Russia continues its war in Ukraine. But any decision on admitting new members requires unanimity from NATO's 30 nations, and Turkey has raised concerns about the presence in Sweden and Finland of activists from the separatist Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK, and other groups living in the neighboring We cannot repeat the mistakes made in the past on, admitting, countries that embrace and feed such terrorists into NATO which is a security organization, Erdogan said in remarks made public Turkey, 
The United States and the European Union have labeled the PKK a terrorist group. Last week, Finnish Foreign Minister Becca Havisto said that we understand that Turkey has some of their own security concerns vis-a-vis -vis terrorism and so forth. But we think that we have good answers for those because we are also part of the fight against the terrorism. So, we think that this issue can be settled. Havisto said. Sweden has denied giving financial assistance or military support to Kurdish militants. Erdogan added that he would have separate telephone conversations Monday with the Ukrainian and Russian presidents. We will continue to encourage the parties to operate channels of dialogue and diplomacy, he said. Duda, Poland boosts defenses so Russia will be afraid to attack us. Apostrophe. Polish President Andrzej Duda says Poles are fearful of Russia but that his nation is boosting its security so that, in a short time, they will be afraid to attack us. Speaking Sunday with CNN's Fareed Zakaria, Duda said his nation's long and often violent history with Russia means that many Poles are naturally worried. Poland shares a land border with Ukraine and several Russian missile attacks have hit within miles of the country, there is no doubt whatsoever that Polish society is afraid of Russia, he said. Duda said Poland is ramping up its defenses, with plans to raise the amount spent on the military and increase the size of its armed forces. Poland's aspiration, he said, is to not need to rely on the United States to help protect its land under Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty. I believe when we are stronger, they will be afraid to attack us, he said in the Sunday broadcast. Zelensky says he can't see Russians' willingness to negotiate. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky suggested in a television interview broadcast Sunday that he does not believe Russian officials are serious about negotiations to end the war. I can't see their willingness, nor can I see any practicality in what we are talking about. Zelensky said in an interview with CNN's Fareed Zakhar in earlier stages, he said through an interpreter, he believed that dialogue would yield an outcome, but it all has stalled. That when asked whether he believed it was possible to negotiate with Vladimir Putin, Zelensky said the Russian president does not fully understand what's going on. I think the president of the Russian Federation should be actually shoved into the reality of today not being in this bubble, this alternative reality of his that he has been building for quite a long time, Zelensky said if Putin is prepared to leave his bubble of this alternative reality into the real world and talk to us, the Ukrainian leader said, and if Putin can understand the human toll of the war, perhaps then will he understand we should start talking and should put, an, into this war that he dot Russia's military professionalism is eroding. U.S. think tank says. Professionalism in the Russian army is eroding, which may be highly detrimental to Russian President Vladimir Putin's chances of winning the war in Ukraine, the Institute for the Study of War, ISW, said in an The Institute, a Washington based think tank, said that waning professionalism among Russian commanders was generating serious vulnerabilities that Kyiv will likely attempt to exploit. Citing the Ukrainian Military Intelligence Directorate, the organization said Russian soldiers were reportedly being instructed by commanders not to evacuate injured comrades or assist other military. Such behavior can have serious impacts on morale and the willingness of soldiers to fight and risk getting injured beyond their own defensive lines, the ISW said. Low morale among Russian troops would surely help Ukraine launch significant counteroffensives with good prospects for success, it added. Serbia agrees to new three year gas contract with Russia. Serbian President Aleksandr Vucic has agreed a new three year contract with Russia's Gazprom to supply natural gas after a phone call with President Vladimir Vucic said the two sides agreed that the gas price would be linked to the price of oil which will offer Serbia discounted rates for the supply. Serbia's existing 10-year contract for Russian gas expires at the end of May. Vucic also discussed the expansion of storage space in Serbia for its imports of Russian gas. Putin said to call him if I feel there is anything more to be discussed, Vucic said, according to Reuters. Serbia last week signed an agreement with neighboring Hungary for additional gas storage space. 
if required, while most European countries are trying to reduce or eliminate their imports of Russian gas and oil, Serbia, a traditional Russian ally, remains entirely dependent on Russia for gas supplies and has not joined Western sanctions against Moscow. Vucic was easily re-elected for a second term in April, after which Putin congratulated him and spoke of the strengthening of the strategic partnership between our country. Meanwhile, Serbia is pursuing a bid to join the European Union.